Welcome back to Just Books. The artist Vivan Sundaram has produced a very great labor of love, a two-volume epic story of his distinguished aunt, the artist Amrita Shergil, which includes the vast repertoire of her paintings as well as volumes of her great correspondence. Though hers was a short life, these two extraordinary volumes are now out. They are called Amrita Shergil, her life in her letters and writings. Vivan, it's an epic work, and there's been great rumor about it for years, if not decades, that you've been uh, producing uh, this life story of Amrita Shergil in her own pictures and in her own works. It's a mega work. How has it taken you so long, decades, as I said? Well, I don't know. When I returned uh, from England in 1970, after four years, and I led a very radical life there, I think some uh, intuition told me I have to connect back not only to India, but to my family and to my, to my aunt. And so at a very young age, I organized both a retrospective, an issue of Marg, and edited her letters in a very uh, limited sort of way. But then uh, in the early 90s, I thought uh, it's time now to uh, re-look at, at the letters and in fact to uh, annotate them uh, in a way which would animate the presentation. And that basic skeletal grid, which then again took another decade to actually work toward what it is today, uh, is what informs the book. Right. Amrita Shergil's was, of course, a remarkable, dramatic, colorful life, but it was a short life. Uh, she was dead before her 29th birthday in the year 1941, yeah. and her life was divided both between, between Europe, uh, on account of her Hungarian mother, and in India, on account of her sick father. Uh, how do you divide this incandescent but brief life? Well, just to start, uh, as her father said, uh, uh, when when she died, uh, that she was conceived in Lahore and actually died in Lahore, but was born in Budapest. And in some sense, that metaphor kind of works uh, a, a journey, uh, which I've called, in a sense, uh, a quartet. It's, it's divided into f four equal parts. The first seven uh, in Budapest, because the mother wanted uh, Amrita to be born, uh, her first child to be born in, in her own country. And then the next... Uh, seven in India in Simla, and then the next seven almost uh, in Paris for her education, and then back in India except for one year in, so maybe slightly um, six months or more uh, in Europe, but finally she always wanted that she wanted to be an Indian artist. One of the most astonishing things about these two volumes is Amrita Shergil in her own words. What an astonishing letter writer. And here she is, prolifically exploding with words in all directions to a variety of correspondence in three languages, Hungarian, her mother tongue, English, with great fluency, and also French. Yeah, she, well, the family was, was a linguist. I mean, her mother uh, knew Italian, and she knew bits of German. She even tried to learn Japanese. And Umrao Singh was a scholar uh, of Persian and Sanskrit. Persian and Sanskrit, and he knew Guru Mukhi and Hindi and English. So it it was a family that that loved languages. And Amrita, from very early on, just loved literature. Uh, as is mentioned in the book, she never had really any formal training. She was got herself thrown out of school after school, or didn't want to. But the the family was so rich in in in, in culture and in literature. And she was a voracious reader. I mean, she's reading James Joyce's Ulysses just a few months after it's come. So she, for her, uh, the word and, and literature uh, was, was very intense for her.